Trust your first impression. What are you imagining? What's the first place that comes to mind? I see tall pine trees. I see tall pine trees. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. And the blue sky. Mm -hmm. There's a, a dirt path in front of me. Tell me more. Um, the path is clear. The path is clear. And the forest is dark. What else do you see around you? Just looks like it. The path goes on for a long ways. The path goes on for a while. Yes. Mm -hmm. What is this path made out of? It's like a yellow gravel dirt. Mm -hmm. Let's take that path and see if we see anything along the way. Describe what you see. Um, I see little the toadstools and grass growing along the path. Mm -hmm. And it's like some forest creatures. Mm -hmm. What kind of forest creatures do you see? Like chipmunks and mm -hmm. squirrels. Okay. What's interesting about this place? It smells great. Mm. What does it smell like? Um, just very fresh and mm -hmm. piney. I don't really hear anything. Mm -hmm. And as you're going down this path, do you feel that you can touch the path with your feet? No, I'm just floating. You're just floating. All right, very good. So since you're floating, you're able to go anywhere. What direction does it feel good to go in? You can go up or straight. I just want to go up. All right, so let's go up and tell me what you see. I, I see the forest stretched out mm -hmm. for miles and miles. And looks like there's like a white castle in the distance. Mm -hmm. Describe that castle for me. What does it look like? It's, um... Looks like white stucco, and it has it has spires mm -hmm. made of tile. Mm -hmm. yeah. Get closer to it, and tell me as you get closer, what sense do you get from this place? I kind of feel like I don't belong there. Mm -hmm. So what emotions do you feel? Mm, cautious and mm -hmm. wary. Yes. So let's find out why it is that you're there. What you need to know today. Let's see what happens next. Where do you see yourself? Mm, I'm inside mm -hmm. the castle now, and mm -hmm. um, there's coats of armor, and I don't hear anybody. It's very quiet. And there's a like oriental rug on the floor. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. What else is in this mm. castle? Oh, there's a baby in there. Mm -hmm. Where is this baby? Up in one of the rooms. Mm -hmm. 
Do you still feel like you're floating, or do you have a body now? I think I have a female body. All right, so take a look at your body and tell me what you're wearing. I've got a long dress on. Mm -hmm. Made of uh, velvet. Made of velvet? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What color is it? It's like a dark green. It's dark green. Mm -hmm. What else are you wearing? I have rings on my fingers. And little slippers. Little slippers? Take a look at your your head. Tell me how you're wearing your hair or if there's anything that you're wearing on your head. Mm, my hair is um, pulled up mm -hmm. and it's like a blonde color. And I have a, some kind of headdress on. Mm -hmm. What does the headdress look like? It's also made of velvet. And I think it has little buttons on it. Hmm. Are you carrying anything? No. Mm -hmm. So let's find out what it is that you're doing there. You said you had seen a baby. Whose baby is this? I think it's mine. Mm -hmm. How do you feel towards this baby? I, I love it. Mm -hmm. Do you care for the baby? Um, no, I, other people do. Mm -hmm. Is it a boy or a girl? It's a boy. Mm -hmm. What do you call it? Edward. Edward. Mm -hmm. What do they call you? Mm, something like ma'am. Mm -hmm. Mammy. Mammy. Mommy. Is that they would call you? Ma'am? Yes. Mm -hmm. So tell me what's happening now. Where are you? I'm, um... I'm in the bedroom where the baby's sleeping mm -hmm. in a bassinet. And I want you to touch base with your emotions and tell me what you're feeling while you're there. I'm feeling at peace, but I'm I'm feeling very isolated and alone. Mm -hmm. Let's find out why. I'd like for you to close that scene and let's go to another scene in that same lifetime that addresses why you're feeling so alone. Be there now. Where are you? I'm in a dining hall. Mm -hmm. And I, we've just finished eating dinner and I, there's a man there. Who is this man? He's older than me, so mm. he could be my father or my husband. Mm -hmm. Trust your impression. Do you feel young or older? I feel, I feel young. Mm -hmm. How old are you there? Um, in my 20s. Mm -hmm. I think he's my father. Mm -hmm. So what's going on right now? What's happening? Uh, he won't let me leave. He won't let me leave that castle. Why is that? He says it's too dangerous out in the forest. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? I don't. I don't think it's fair that mm -hmm. I should be kept 
kept inside. Mm -hmm. Have you been in the forest before? Yes, mm -hmm. when I was younger. Mm -hmm. I think he's afraid of he's afraid of bandits and uh, people who would attack us. Mm -hmm. Who else is in that dining room with you? Um, I, my mother's there too. Mm -hmm. What is it that your father does? He he owns land around that castle. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, like a like a serfdom. Mm -hmm. He owns the land. He owns people farm for him. Mm -hmm. He collects rent. He's a he's, landowner. He's a landowner. I, mm -hmm. I believe he's quite powerful mm -hmm. and respected. Mm -hmm. But um, it's also a dangerous place because mm -hmm. there are people who will steal and rob. Mm -hmm. Very good. So let's see what else happens there. What happens after your father tells you you can't leave? I, I feel very frustrated and angry. And I feel like I just, I just want to get on a horse and ride away. Mm -hmm. So let's see what happens next. What do you do? see a white horse <laughs> and mm -hmm. I, I decided one day to go out. So tell me where you go. What do you see? I go out along the road and I see the little, the farms and the cottages and the people working in the fields mm -hmm. and they're staring at me. They know I shouldn't be out wandering alone. Mm -hmm. What do you feel from them? Connect. I feel reverence from them. Mm -hmm. um, but they are also worried that I'm just, they know like I shouldn't be out riding mm -hmm. on my own. Do you so. feel that there's fear there? For you? There's concern. There's concern. Mm -hmm. So let's continue and see where you go. There's a small village. Describe it for me. What does it look like? Um, it looks like, um, like Elizabethan style homes with the stucco and wood mm -hmm. and diamond paint glass windows um, it's not a very busy town what do you do there i'm going to the tavern mm -hmm. what do you see there in the tavern uh, there's mostly men in there, mm -hmm. and um, I've gone in there to meet somebody. It's a, another young man my, my age. Mm -hmm. Did you agree to meet there? Yes. Mm -hmm. How do you know this young man? Who is he? He's somebody I care about. I, uh, I think he's a commoner. Mm -hmm. What happens when you meet him? We're making some plans to go away. Mm -hmm. 
going away, like running away from home. Running, running away, yes. Mm -hmm. What does he call you? Mary. Mary. Mm -hmm. So Mary, what plans do you come up with? I believe we're going to be leaving that area and establishing ourselves in a, a little cottage far away and I'm I'm going to get money. I have money for us to travel. All right. And I've decided that I don't want to live in the castle with my parents anymore. Mm -hmm. I, um, I want to experience my own life. Very good. So close that scene and let's see what happens next. How does that progress? So we have our own little farm and I've given up a, a life of luxury. Um, it's it's hard, but I, I think I'm happy there with mm -hmm. him. What do you do, Mary? I, um, I do the farm work. And I also sew. Mm -hmm. Do you have any children? Not yet. Mm -hmm. All right. Is there anything important in this time of your life? Anything else in the scene? It's, um, it's it's a happy time, but it's hard work. It's hard work. Very mm -hmm. good. So let's close that scene. And now let's go to another scene in that same lifetime when something happens to impact your life. Be there now. Uh, mm -hmm. um, my father's men have discovered where I live. Mm -hmm. And... They've arrived on horses, and they're taking me back. Are you going by yourself? Yeah. How does that feel, Mary, to be taken back? Oh, I'm so sad and angry. And... Well, I'm sick. Mm -hmm. Really feel like a like a prisoner. Mm -hmm. So let's see what happens when you arrive at the castle. Oh, uh, they're very angry with me, my parents. Mm -hmm. And they're very ashamed because they know other people in the village are aware of what happened and their pride is hurt. So I think I, I've been banished into a room in a castle. Mm -hmm. Describe this room for me. Be there now. It has um, a wooden floor and and stone walls and very basic furniture in there. Mm -hmm. And it has a small window I can look out. I think it's, it's like up in one of the turrets, small room. Mm -hmm. Is this like your own little prison? Yes. Mm -hmm. How do they treat you, Mary? The people who work in the castle are nice to me. 
but um, my own parents don't trust me anymore, so they feel that it's for everyone's good that I stay where I am. Mm -hmm. So I want you, Mary, to see yourself eating a meal at this time in your life. Be there now. Yeah, it's, um, it's like pork chops and mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. Where do you eat this? Do you go somewhere to eat? I'm still in that room. It's it's a little table mm -hmm. that's next to a fireplace. So they bring the meals to you? They do, yes. Mm -hmm. I want you to touch with your emotions and tell me what you're feeling. I'm feeling very sad and lonely and really don't feel like living anymore. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's close that scene and let's move now to another scene in that same lifetime when something else has happened very important to impact your life. Be there now. I'm I'm considering hanging myself. Mm -hmm. What are you doing there? What's happening? I have like a overturned uh, wooden bucket and some rope. Mm -hmm. And there's a rafter. And I'm just considering ending it all because I'm so miserable. Mm -hmm. So let's see what happens, Mary. Take me through the scene. I'm, I'm crying yet I'm determined. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm standing on the bucket and. gonna jump off. Mm -hmm. So look at it, this scene as an outsider and you can view it from the outside and tell me what happens next. I hung myself. Mm -hmm. So now I'd like for you to allow that body to let go of the soul and transition that soul out of that body. Tell me what happens to you, Mary, as you leave that body behind. What thoughts are going through your head? I feel myself drifting up through the clouds and I finally feel like I'm free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What was the purpose of that life, Mary? Mm. It was to understand the importance of free will mm -hmm. and freedom and experiencing how people can control each other. Mm -hmm. And what lessons did you learn while you were there? Mm -hmm. I wasn't very strong. I, I gave in. Mm -hmm. to the circumstances. You didn't stand up for yourself? No. Mm -hmm. And I, I should have communicated better with my parents mm -hmm. instead of just taking their orders. Mm -hmm. All right, Mary, so let's continue going up to the clouds and tell me what happens next. Where do you go? Who do you see? There's a, there's a gate and there's a man standing there waiting for me. Mm -hmm. What does this man look like? He, um, he has a very long beard and white hair and mm -hmm. he's wearing a white robe. Mm -hmm. 
and um, he's welcoming me in. Welcoming me in. Mm-hmm. Connect with him mind to mind, soul to soul. Let's find out who this man is. He's my guide. Mm-hmm. What's his name? It's Merlin. Mm-hmm. Very good. So what happens after Merlin lets you in? I just uh, walk through the gate. Where do you go? And there's just um, like this big sphere of light. Mm-hmm. And we walk into it. So let's find out what happens once you're inside the sphere. I feel like it's um, rejuvenating me, kind of cleansing mm-hmm. the raw emotions left over from that last incarnation. Mm-hmm. Does he stay with you or are you by yourself there? He's with me. Mm-hmm. Does he tell you anything? you communicate in any way? He's just telling me to to rest for now. Mm-hmm. How does it feel to be with Merlin? It's, it's very nice. He's very loving. Mm-hmm. Very good. So now I'd like for you to go forward in time to when you are now out of that resting place and it's time once again to prepare for another life one that has impacted you so I'd like for you to see yourself meeting again with those that will help you with your life tell me where you are Um, it's another room, and it's like a semicircular table, mm-hmm. and there are like six, six people sitting at the table. I think mm-hmm. they're mostly men. Mm-hmm. What do they look like? Do they have features? They all look very old Mm -hmm. and wise. Mm. How do you feel to be in their presence? I, um, I feel like they have some authority over me. Mm Mm-hmm. So connect with them mind to mind, and let's find out why you're in this room. We're here to help me pick another lifetime. Mm Mm-hmm. So is there a discussion? How do you pick a lifetime? I'm not getting a lot of information from them. Mm-hmm. I almost feel like there are a few choices. Mm-hmm. So what are the choices? For example, is there a purpose for picking a certain lifetime? Are there lessons 
there there are lessons that need to be learned. Mm -hmm. Do you know what those lessons are? Uh, to be less selfish. Mm -hmm. Less judgmental. Mm -hmm. So what happens? What happens next? Do they choose a life or do you? I feel like they choose a life. Mm -hmm. Is there any say as to who's in your life with you? No, I, I don't know. I feel very alone in this room with them. So tell me what happens next. What's the next step of choosing this life? How do you get there? I feel like I'm just waiting in this room mm -hmm. to be born. So allow the time to progress to when it's time. It's now time to be born. What happens now? How do you get from that room to your new mother? I feel like I just went down a tunnel and and was born. Mm -hmm. So what do you see? Um, it's a very crude room. Mm -hmm. I feel like I my mother is lying on straw. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. Mm -hmm. Describe it for me. Um, there are a lot of people in the room. And it's daytime, it's quite bright in there. Who are these people that are in the room? Uh, I think they're, they're extended family. Mm -hmm. And they, they seem to be happy that I was born. Mm -hmm. How are these people dressed? They have um, rough cloth, mm -hmm. robes and pants, dresses. Mm -hmm. They have robes? Yes, mm -hmm. they're like, tied with rope. Mm -hmm. How are the men dressed? In like a brown rough fabric mm -hmm. with sandals on their feet. Mm -hmm. What year does this feel like? It feels like, um... A lot of biblical times, mm -hmm. or, Yeah. So al allow that number to pop up in your mind. One, two, and three. What year do you get? 4 AD. Mm-hmm. And where are you? I'm in, uh, in the Middle East. Mm-hmm. Are you male or female there? Male. Male. Mm-hmm. So 
So let's find out more about your life. Let's see why this life is important. I want you to close that scene and let's move forward to a very important time in that same lifetime when something important is happening. Be there now. I feel like I'm a, a young boy mm-hmm. and I, I'm with donkeys. Mm-hmm. What do you do there with these donkeys? I take care of them. Mm-hmm. So where are you? Look around you. Uh, it's a like a stable area, mm-hmm. paddock for the donkeys. Yes. And they're kind of like a farm-like situation where there's chickens running around. So let's find out what's important about this day. What's happening on this day? There's a, a celebration. Mm-hmm. I think it's like a religious celebration. What's the occasion? It's a, a feast day. Mm-hmm. Tell me more. Uh, there's going to be a, a slaughter mm-hmm. and uh, I think it's a goat or a sheep is going to be slaughtered mm-hmm. and there's going to be a feast and people are going to come together to celebrate. Tell me more. What happens? I think I think it's a wedding. Somebody's getting married. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like it's my sister who's getting married. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about that? I'm happy for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how does this day impact your life? What happens? It's a... It's a great day and people are are celebrating the marriage. Mm -hmm. And... Maybe I'm a little envious because my sister's getting a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. I see. Very good. Anything else in that scene that's important? Mm. I don't think so. Very good. So let's close that scene. And now let's move forward to another day in time in that same lifetime when something has impacted your life, something very important. Where are you? I'm not really seeing anything, but I I get the sense that my father has died. Mm-hmm. So what does that mean for you now? That I need to take on more responsibility. Mm-hmm. And I think I'm about like early 20s, mm-hmm. 18 or so. Do you feel that you're ready for, for this responsibility? I think I am. Mm-hmm. So let's see what happens. How does your life change now that your father has died? What are you responsible for? I take care of my mother. Mm-hmm. And the business. 
Uh -huh. Which I'm not quite sure what the business is. Mm -hmm. You'll know it. It'll come to you. I think it has um, something to do with the, the animals, mm -hmm. raising them and selling them. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm not that good at running the business. Mm -hmm. Why is that? The, uh, the expectations are high and my mother's depending on me. How does that make you feel? I, I'm under a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. mm. I also believe there's a gambling problem on my end. Mm -hmm. I'm not very responsible. So the money that you make, you gamble away? Yes. Mm -hmm. Does your family know this? My mother does now. Yeah, mm -hmm. she's not happy. Mm -hmm. what, do they, what does your mother call you in that life? What is your name? I think my name is Abel. Okay, so Abel. What happens next in your life? I'd like for you to progress to the next significant event in your life. Be there now. I am... Um, I'm gambling. Mm -hmm. And drinking. And... I think I'm, I'm out of money and the people I'm playing with want, want their share of what I owe them and I, it's not turning out well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Abel, close that scene and let's go to the moment before you die in that lifetime. Be there now. Where are you? I'm at home in a bed. Mm -hmm. And I think I've been very sick from drinking too much. Mm -hmm. How old do you feel mm -hmm. there? In my 40s. Mm -hmm. well, what's happened to your business? I, yeah, it's, it's gone mm -hmm. and my sister and her husband have to take care of me. Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you now to take your last breath in that lifetime, transition away from that body and tell me what you're feeling and thinking as you leave that body behind. I'm, I'm feeling relieved mm -hmm. to be free from the debt and responsibility. Mm -hmm. Where do you go to, Abel? I just see, just see a night sky. Mm -hmm. I'm just floating up. Mm -hmm. And as you're floating up, what was the purpose of that lifetime? To experience what it's like to not have control over urges mm -hmm. and to experience what the loss is and how it affects others. Mm -hmm. What lesson did you learn from that? Ultimately, I from a higher perspective, needed to forgive myself mm -hmm. for, for being in that circumstance. 
Have you forgiven yourself, Ed? I believe I have. Okay, yes. very good. So continue on your journey, and let's see who greets you now. It's Merlin again. Mm. Where does he greet you? Seems like it's just space. Mm -hmm. So connect with him mind to mind, soul to soul, heart to heart. And let's find out what Merlin tells you now. He says I've, I've had some difficult lifetimes and said next time I should experience something a little bit easier mm -hmm. and that I yeah as in my soul learning I don't need to be so hard on myself I can also take breaks mm -hmm. and have incarnations that are a pleasure very good So now I'd like for you to close that scene and we're going to go to the lifetime of the healer that has affected you the most. We're going to go drifting and floating through time and space and find that lifetime of that healer that is impacting your life now as Sarah. Be there now and trust your first impression. What do you see? I see myself as a, an old woman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With, um, she has dark hair though. And, mm -hmm. uh, seems like she's very petite in stature. Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you now to integrate with her body completely, allowing you to see through her eyes and feel her feelings. And look all around you and tell me where you are. Where are you? Um, I, I think I'm in Spain. Mm hmm In Spain? But I don't... It's just a knowing. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm going to count from one to three, and we'll find out what year and what place you're in. One, two, and three. What year is it? Uh, 1400s. Mm -hmm, the 1400s. And where are you? Mm, Ca Catalonia. Mm -hmm. Catalan. Mm -hmm. What do they call you in that life? Like Bor Borgia. Mm -hmm. yeah. When I say the name Borgia, does that sound right? Yes. All right. So, Borgia, let's find out what it is that you do. I I heal people with energy that I've had since I was very young. Mm -hmm. How do you heal people? Where does this energy come from? I think it comes from God. Mm -hmm. and I'm able to use my hands mm -hmm. to mend bones, to heal wounds. Do people know about this? They do. Mm -hmm. Is this something that people like for you to do? Yes. Mm -hmm. So let's find out what it is that you're doing today. Are you working today, Borgia? Yes, somebody 
somebody has a cow that's injured and it's got a sore on its leg mm -hmm. while I'm there in the in the barn mm -hmm. healing the cow. Mm -hmm. What is it you, that you do? I, I think I um, I make some kind of salve mm -hmm. and I put it on the wound, but then I also lay my hands and it heals mm -hmm. the wound. Very good. How long does it take, Borgia? It only takes a few minutes. All right, very good. So now I'd like for you, Borgia, to go to a time and place in that same lifetime when something important is happening. Be there now. Somebody's bringing a child to me that's, that's near death. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. I think the child fell and is unconscious and not responsive. And parents are besides themselves mm -hmm. so I have them it's a boy bring him into the my house and he's on the kitchen table I think his back is broken his back is broken mm. what do you do I have him put him down on a, his belly so that I can see his spine and I, I visualize his spine as it is and then I'm able to visualize it coming back together again and I see it light connecting everything back together again my, mm -hmm. using my hands and my visualization to to heal him and um, the family members are in the room watching me do this and they're scared like mm -hmm. they feel like th they want their their loved one to be healed but at the same time they're very scared they don't understand what I'm doing and and I think they feel like they could get into trouble mm-hmm um, perhaps for having me do the work. Mm -hmm. So let's see what happens with this child. So I, I determined that his spine is healed and he's still not awake, but I instruct the parents to take him home and to feed him certain foods to make him well again. And um, I don't, he, I think he's going to be well. They, I don't accept much in payment. I just want food mm -hmm. or something. And so then they leave that for me and they carry him away. And everybody thinks I will be well. It's miraculous. Mm-hmm. So let's see what happens next. Three days later, the boy wakes up and he's fine. And his parents are overjoyed. And after that, my notoriety spreads. Mm -hmm. How does that affect you? I'm I'm happy to help more people. Mm -hmm. Very good. So let's close that scene and now let's go further out when something has impacted your life again. I'm I'm being woken up in the night. Somebody's mm -hmm. banging on my door. Mm-hmm. And who 
I'm was scared. Mm-hmm. Um, What's different about this? It's a bunch of men, mm-hmm. and they. Uh, They're accusing me of being a witch, and they want to haul me off to the priest Mm -hmm. or a monk or some kind of monastery. Mm -hmm. Then they've tied ropes around my my wrists, behind my back, and they're taking me away in a cart. You can watch this as an observer and just tell me what happens. You don't have to feel any discomfort. Where do you go, Borgia? Where do they take you? They're taking me into a city, Mm -hmm. and there's uh, like a panel of people there. How many people are there on this panel? Three. Three men. Mm-hmm. And the te- the men who brought me there say this is the person that we were telling you about. And I think he's a bishop. Mm-hmm. The church is very interested in me and what my abilities are. He um, he has somebody's arm broken, and he tells me to heal it in front of him. Mm-hmm. And I decide that I will heal the arm. You will. I decide to do it. I'm. Mm-hmm. So they know I'm I'm not a fraud, that I am a true healer. And they don't like it. They're actually afraid of that mm-hmm. ability mm-hmm. that I have. So they want to get rid of me. Mm-hmm. Um They put me into a cell somewhere. And there are a bunch of other people down in there. Mm-hmm. And it's um, a cold, damp place. And seems like we just wait there for a long time. And I just get weaker and weaker. And I try to help the people I'm with. But I know I'm not going to get out of the situation. Mm-hmm. You try to heal yourself. I try to heal my stomach mm-hmm. when I'm there because I have a lot of pain in my stomach. Mm-hmm. Find out what that pain is. Where did that pain come from? The food they're feeding us is poisoned. Mm. And it's making me sick. Mm-hmm. And I'm just so hungry. Um, I, I stopped eating the food, so I'm very weak. So, Borgia, I'd like for you to go now to the last day of your life in that lifetime. 
and let's see what happens. Where are you? I'm in a courtyard. Mm -hmm. And they're just, they're just ex executing people there. Mm -hmm. so, in what way? Um, they're taking off their heads with a sword mm -hmm. or an axe. So I'd like for you now to go to the last moment of your life. You can watch it as an observer. And just tell me what happens to you. What do they do? They just, um, I'm on my knees with my hands behind my back and mm -hmm. um, I put my head on a, like a wooden block or an old tree stump mm -hmm. and uh, they just take my head off. All right. So as your head is detached, I'd like for you to tell me what happens to your soul. I feel like I went directly right up to the light. Mm -hmm. Very quickly. Mm -hmm. and what happened? What happened in that light? Feeling a lot of um, acceptance and in love, and like a welcoming home. Mm -hmm. Who's welcoming you home? I feel like it's like a spirit family, like mm -hmm. soul group. Mm -hmm. So, what was the purpose of that lifetime? I was. I was there to help as many people as I could during very dark times mm -hmm. and to be courageous and brave despite the risks. Do you feel you accomplished that? Yes, mm -hmm. and did as much as I could. What lessons did you learn from that? I learned compassion, to trust in my abilities, to be, to be on my path despite the risks, mm -hmm. and 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 to not fear. So, Borgia, how are you affecting Sarah's life now? What is it from your lifetime that she is feeling and being affected by? I'm giving her the knowing and how to heal. Mm -hmm. How to use her hands and the energy. She needs to trust her abilities more. Mm -hmm. And to not have fear. There's no need for fear. Mm -hmm. Are you negatively impacting her in any way? I am. Mm -hmm. She has issues with religion and the Catholic Church in particular. Mm -hmm. And yeah, she's turned away from religion mm -hmm. and due to my experience. Mm -hmm. Would she have been able to progress with her spiritual abilities had she been in the church? Now, there's a lot of negative energy and beliefs attached to the church. She, she needs to work through that. Mm -hmm. What would you recommend? She, 
she needs to realize that it's okay for people to have their beliefs in religion and even if even if she doesn't believe what they believe they're entitled to that mm -hmm. so she should not make any judgments mm -hmm. so Borgia you used to heal people with the energy given to you how is Sarah receiving that energy The energy is coming directly from source mm -hmm. to her. Reiki is just one of the modalities mm -hmm. that she uses. What is she meant to be using this energy for? To heal herself. Mm -hmm. And then once that's accomplished, she can she can heal others. Mm -hmm. So what does she need to heal in herself now in order to progress? Her, her heart. Mm -hmm. What's happened to her heart, Borgia? It's closed off. Mm -hmm. Has she done it or was it done to her? It was done to her. Mm -hmm. Borgia, can you assist me in finding out how this heart was closed? Black magic. Black magic. Borgia, since you are so powerful as a healer, would you assist me with this finding this black magic and transforming it today yes all right so I'd like for you now to look for the source of where this black magic came from and let's find out the purpose why it was sent to her Or is it trying coming? to prevent it's the darkness? Mm -hmm. It's the same, the same source of darkness that I experience All right. in my life. It's come back again. All right. So is this black magic the same one that you had following you, Borgia? Yes, I think it is. All right. How far back does this black magic go? goes back it goes back to the formulation of the church mm. and what is it that Sarah was doing at that time that caused that black magic to begin she was helping those in need. Mm -hmm. Same as you? Yes. All right. So would you allow me to now take her back to where the origin of that black magic began? Yes. Let's find out where it came from. And let's find it. It's in, back in Greece. Mm -hmm. Back in Greece. Let's find out what was happening there. Tell me she what's... was like a priestess in the in the natural religion of that time. Mm -hmm. And what happened? Well, 
a new religion was being formed to control the masses and there was a struggle mm -hmm. to to end the old ways and people who were involved with the old ways were being suppressed, mm -hmm. terrorized. And in what way was this priestess terrorized? What allowed this black magic to take hold of her soul? Be there now. See it through those eyes. What's happening? I just, I see just the military people mm -hmm. just destroying, destroying temples and documents and What happens next? What allows this darkness to infiltrate? It's just the sheer numbers of people that are behind it. Mm -hmm. And the force of it. Mm -hmm. And it's fear. Mm -hmm. It's fear. It's the, that's the black magic that All right. settles in. So we can now reverse that fear because fear is just false evidence appearing real. Let's begin shining light on that fear. Knowing that going through time and space, nothing ends. So I'd like for you to call in that divine light, that Christ light, that the same light that Borgia has used to heal, let's heal this event. Bring in that light and spread that light among all of those people. Allow that light to get brighter and brighter, going through the hearts of those men, calming down all of that fear bringing peace and feel that calm taking over allowing it to just become so calm so peaceful and as that calm and peace feel like it's going through all of the hearts feel it transforming into love Feel the healing from within as that heart begins to get softer and softer and opening up in all of the hearts of those men of yourself. Feel the transformation. It's like the melting of the heart, the melting of the fear into love. And Borgia, tell me how that has affected the scene. It seems like people have woken up and they're saying, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. What's going on? Mm -hmm. Like a dream, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'd like Borgia to you for you to follow the timelines that have now followed this priestess all the way into your lifetime and Sarah's life and tell me how this transformation has helped
what it has it done to our heart? It's it softened and, and lighter mm-hmm. and brighter. Mm-hmm. And the work that needs to be done can feel holy without any any fear or tainting or any association with anything that's black. And dark. Very good. Very good. Borgia, do you feel that you have healed from your lifetime? Or do you need to get that head back? I might be mm. good to have All right. head back. So go ahead, Borgia, and I'd like for you to see yourself back into that lifetime when you lost your head. And I'd like for you to project that love that has been transformed, that fear that transformed into love. Beam that light that you have used from the divinity and bring that back, that head back into your body. Feel yourself becoming whole once again. Mend yourself like you did those arms and the spine. I'm healed again. Very good. Thank you so much, Borgia, for the assistance you've given us. May the light of the universe always accompany you. Thank you. Thank you. Now take a deep breath in and let me speak with your higher self. Do I have permission to ask questions today of the higher self? Yes. Thank you. I know you could have shown Sarah many different lifetimes today. Why did you choose to show her the one of this young girl who ran away and ended up hanging herself? What does that have to do with her life now? It helps to explain her fear of being caged in and not having her freedom to do what she wants to do. She has a uh, a fierce desire to be able to do what she wants to do. Mm-hmm. And that strength comes from that lifetime. Mm-hmm. Um, I, she also does not but she would never consider suicide again. Mm-hmm. She's already lived that. Yes. Very good. Do you feel that by seeing this lifetime that it helps answer some of her questions? Or possibly questions she didn't know she had? I don't think it addressed the particular questions that mm-hmm. she had outlined, but it helps explain who she is today. Very good. Very good. Thank you. What about the lifetime of this boy who ends up being an irresponsible gambler, loses everything? How is that lifetime impacting her now? She's much more in control of her impulses and that lifetime helped her with that lesson. Mm -hmm. She's um, more cautious and more responsible. Very good. And why did you show her the lifetime of Borgia? Going back to her, Sarah's issues with healing and the, and the fear of healing. Mm-hmm. Going back to the source of of all of that and finally being released from it, mm-hmm. knowing knowing that you can overcome the fear mm-hmm. and. Also forgiving those who have hurt her in the past. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that by seeing that scene of the priestess may have helped her with some of her healing? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Mm -hmm. So, how do you see her heart now? There's still some tightness there. Mm -hmm. What's causing that tightness there? What's closed it off? I think there's a presence there. All right. Would you allow me to address this presence? Yes, please. See if we can assist it. Very good. So I'm going to put my hand over her heart, over this area where there's a presence, and we're going to bring it up, 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 and you can express yourself today. Are you male or female energy? Female. Female. What name may I call you by? Beth. Beth. Beth, how long have you been in her heart area? When she was a teenager. Mm. What happened when she was a teenager to allow you to go into her heart? Mm. She was feeling lonely and isolated. Mm -hmm. Beth, how old are you? 28. Mm -hmm. And what year is it for you, Beth? 1972. 1972. What happened to you in 1972, Beth? What happened to your body? It was a car accident. A car accident. What happened after the accident? Where did you go? I died in the hospital. Mm hmm. And then what? Where did you go? I wanted to find my friends. Mm -hmm. I, wanted to, I wanted to go back to the party. Mm -hmm. And they weren't there anymore. They weren't there anymore. Mm -hmm. So how did you find Sarah? She was young and and pretty, and I felt like I wanted to experience what she was experiencing. Mm -hmm. So, when you found Sarah and connected with her, how did she feel you? How did you make her feel as you were using her body? I feel. Shy. Mm hmm. You made her feel shy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I made her feel shy and what else? Insecure and insecure. Mm hmm. What else? I also made her feel angry. Mm hmm. Why? Because she could not go out and party like I could party. Ah. And it would make her feel really angry if her mother wouldn't let her out. Beth, were you drinking when you had that accident? Yes. Were you driving? Yes. Mm hmm. So did you make her drink? A little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's pretty strong willed, though. Mm hmm. What else did you make her do? Made her stay up late. Mm -hmm. So Beth, why is it that you didn't go home to the light when you had the opportunity? I just wanted to hang out with my friends. And mm -hmm. Did you ever find your friends again? No, I. They were lost. Mm -hmm. for me, I didn't find them. So, Beth, it seems that this attachment has not benefited you at all, has it? 
No. Mm -hmm. Would you like to finally feel what you've been wanting to feel all this time? Yes. What you've been looking for? Yes. Mm -hmm. Before I share that with you, why have you made Sarah's heart feel so tight? My chest was crushed in that mm, accident. I mm. see. All right. So we're going to do something about that to relieve that. Okay, Beth? Okay. All right, I want you to look inside of you. There's a little spark of light there. This light is from the Creator. This is what created you, Beth. Tell me when you find that light. I see it. All right, now make it bigger and bigger until it takes over your entire essence. And tell me how that feels. It feels wonderful. It feels mm -hmm. like peace. Mm -hmm. Now make it even bigger. Make it, make it as big as a star. Feel the power of that light. Feel the joy and love of that light. How does that feel? Feels wonderful. Mm -hmm. Beth, this is home. This is like going to source. Are you ready to feel this all the time? Yes. All right. So I'd like for you to begin removing all of your essence from this woman's body. Begin pulling out all of your attachment to Sarah. And Sarah, I'd like for you to go ahead and go inside of your chest and see how it is that Beth is attached to you. And tell me what it looks like. It's like um, black strings, mm -hmm. so sticky the, black strings. So begin removing those black strings. You could use any tool you want. You can use a hose. You can use light. You can use possibly a hedge trimmer. Whatever it is that you want to use. Let's cut all those cords. You can vacuum it. What would you like to use? I'm using the hedge clippers. All right, so let's get I'm all those kidding. hedge clippers. And later we're going to just vacuum all of that remaining stuff out. And now, Beth, I'd like for you to go back in time, back to 1972, and see your body crushed in that accident. Do you see it, Beth? Yes. Use that white light to begin healing your body and feel the relief as your body becomes whole once again. And tell me when it's completely healed. It's healed now. Very good. So now, Beth, I'd like for you to go through the top of her head right here. And Archangel Michael is there. He's going to take your hand and take you right back to Source, back home. Tell me, Beth, when you get there. I'm there. Very good. What would you like to say to Sarah about what you've done this whole time? Sarah, I'm sorry. I was lost and didn't know my way back. Mm-hmm. Sarah, do you forgive her? Yes. All right. Let's send her home with love. Beth, may the light of the universe always accompany you. Thank you very much. So now I'd like to ask the higher self if we can continue with the questions. Yes. Very good. She has questions around about her Kundalini awakening. She wants to know if she had one and the heart was it opening while she was practicing the Hatha Yoga and Bhakti Yoga? And again after the Reiki attunement. Was that a Kundalini awakening? Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. yes. And we sent her a dream mm -hmm. to, there were two snakes mm -hmm. in the dream and that was to let her know that it was an awakening, and it was the start of her healing. Mm -hmm. Good. And what was the, um, what happened to her 
after she was quote-unquote healed by that man twice in that healing frequency program. What happened to her? He lowered her vibration. Mm -hmm. For what purpose? Turned, turned her abilities off. Mm -hmm. He's an agent mm -hmm. of the dark. He's an agent. Mm -hmm. He's found a way to have access to a lot of light workers mm -hmm. and to turn them off. So this is a free will planet and she did not give her consent to have her abilities turned off. No. Can we turn them back on? Yes, we can. All right. Now, is he attached to her in any way? Does he have any cords attached to her? Yes. All right. So can we begin cutting all of those cords? Yes. All right, thank you. And let me know what you're doing with those cords. They're deep into her abdomen. Mm-hmm. And I'm cutting them, but then there's still pieces left, roots in there. Mm-hmm. They Can need to be burned out. All right. Can I ask for some assistance to help you? Yes, please. All right. I'd like to ask for Archangel Raphael and also for the non-physical physicians, the surgeons. And let's begin working on her right now. And the higher self, would you tell me what it is that you're doing to burn these out? What's being used? Sending light. Mm -hmm. Light. It's, it's love and... Let me know when you're finished or I can continue. You can continue. Thank you very much. She wants to know about all of these past lives that are affecting her now, and we went through a lot of them. But can we find out why her wrists and her throat chakra are affected. Is this from the the cutting of the head? Or something else? Yes, the mm -hmm. throat chakra is from the head. All right, so we've healed that Beheading. today. Yes. Mm -hmm. What about the wrists? Was it the same lifetime? The wrists are from another lifetime. Mm -hmm. Can you tell her about that one? We'd like to get some healing on that. Again, she was healing people mm -hmm. and offering advice to them. And people were very jealous. So they accused her of false things to have her punished. Mm -hmm. And her hands were taken off mm -hmm. so that she couldn't heal with them anymore. So can we go into that past life and join those hands again? Yes. All right, so take her back there so that she can do that work. Let's bring that white light in. See her hands severed and bring them back to where they are once again attached to her body. They're healed. Very good. Thank you so much. Does she need to be connected to that lifetime anymore? Is there anything there that she needs? No. Very good. So let's take from that lifetime 
all of the healing information and just release the rest. Is that okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. She asks what her life purpose is. Is she to be a healer? Yeah, she used to be a healer mm -hmm. and to focus on her spiritual spirituality. Mm -hmm. She asks about shamanism. Is that a path? Yes, mm -hmm. it is a path because it's an ancient one that's very much connected to the planet. Mm -hmm. Being in touch with the spirit of the earth and of nature. Mm -hmm. Is she herself an earth spirit or a star seed? She's of the earth. She's of the earth, okay. What about Reiki? Should she be doing Reiki? Yes, Reiki's a good modality. Mm -hmm. Another question is whether she should be going back to work, like a normal job. Is that her path? No. No. Okay. So right now she tells me that she has had some spiritual gifts open up for her. She wants to know if she's a medium. Yes, she's a medium. Mm -hmm. So who are these people who popped up after her Reiki one attunement? These are spirits that are caught in between. Mm. They're seeking the light mm -hmm. and they want to be freed. Now, do they see her as a light? They see her as a light in a way mm -hmm. of getting back home. Mm -hmm. So what should she be doing? She should be praying for them mm -hmm. and showing them the way. Okay. Sending them Reiki. Okay. Well, boost them. What is the association that she has with water? Does that activate her? It's very soothing and, and calming and it and it clears her energy field so that mm -hmm. she's more open. Okay. So should she get into a practice of using water to activate and deactivate? It's good for her to use water to cleanse her energetic field. Mm -hmm. And it's also very important that she drinks plenty of water during the day. Okay. Good. Was she communicating with deceased people during Savasana in yoga class? Yes, she was. Mm -hmm. What can she, she do when, when they communicate with her in the future? They have, the spirits have messages mm -hmm. that they know the living want to receive. So if Sarah is willing to relay those messages, it mm -hmm. would bring great peace to both parties. It's just a matter of feeling confident mm -hmm. with the message and confident in her abilities. Mm -hmm. Good. Who's helping her from the spiritual side? with this information, with these abilities. Jesus. Jesus. Very good. Now, would you tell her why she had those two visions of aliens during Savasana? Who were they? She's worked with monkey beings before in other lifetimes. Mm -hmm. She's she knows them well. Mm -hmm. Who is this slave being? That was something so that she could see that not all extraterrestrials are benign beings. Mm. And what she saw there was a slave on a ship. Mm -hmm. 
and and it's not just a it's not just something that happens on earth it happens throughout the universe mm -hmm. so people are people no matter where yes mm -hmm. it's not, not just an earthly problem mm -hmm. okay what about the vision she had about Egyptian and Mayan pyramids Sarah has had lifetimes mm -hmm. during the Egyptian period, even before, and also during the times when those pyramids were activated and actually functioning as temples of healing. Was she a healer in, in those lifetimes? She's had many lifetimes then. She's mm -hmm. played all different kinds of roles. Okay. Um, she's been healed in those te in those pyramids before. Okay. So what was those? What were those visions about? It's more about bringing back the ancient knowledge for everyone to know about. Okay. The true purpose of those structures, to know the truth. It's time for humanity to know the truth. Mm -hmm. Would you want to elaborate on what does the truth is? There was a lot of knowledge that's been lost mm -hmm. over time, and humans coexisted with extraterrestrials in beneficial relationships. Mm -hmm. And humans were able to heal themselves. They didn't have to suffer as much as they do now. The technology was there to regenerate yourself, to heal yourself, mm -hmm. to be connected even greater to source. And we're returning to those times now. But people wish to know the true meaning of um, pyramids mm -hmm. that they were and the veil is lifting will we, we be remembering what they're for those who are more connected to their higher selves mm -hmm. are receiving this information okay and they can share it with others but the information comes to those when they're ready Okay, very good. What about the tones that she hears in her ears? What's going on with that? What are those tones? It's a, it's an energetic recalibration. Hmm. Is this happening just to her or to everybody? It happens to, to many people. Mm -hmm. It's not harmful. Okay. It's just something that is noticeable and it's harmless. Okay, good. She says that there are times when she closes her eyes and she sees negative type images, like a video playing at night. What are these? Those are actually bleed-throughs from lifetimes that are occurring now, her own, actually. Her own lifetimes? Yes, other lifetimes. It's a bleed-through of reality. Mm -hmm. Does she need that? Not really. She has the ability to, to tap into them. Mm -hmm. It's not very harmful. It's just something curious mm -hmm. all the colors and things that she sees the colors are is our energy field her aura she can see the colors okay. she can see the energy coming in and going out she wants to know if her awareness of past lives and simultaneous lives in this time period are correct yes they are they are they so are. you're you've been giving her images yes. of these yes mm-hmm and who are the many light beings that accompany her? She has a, a big team, a large team of angelic beings mm -hmm. that agreed to be with her in this lifetime to accomplish the things that she needs to accomplish mm -hmm. because of the trauma and fear from the past lifetimes as a healer. Yes. They're all on board to help her now. So she's not alone. No, definitely mm -hmm. not. And they are so happy and willing to help. Mm -hmm. 
and they never tire of her requests. So she should continue asking every time she needs something. Yes. Mm -hmm. What about during her Reiki healing? Are there any specific ones that are helping her just for that? Archangel Michael mm -hmm. and Raphael are there. Uriel. Mm -hmm. So it's basically the angelic beings who are helping her. Yes. Who are Leah, Zoroaster, and the Swami that she saw or heard? Those are people from past lives. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Well. They they're they're helpful mm. when they come to her. Okay. In her meditations, and um, if she clears her mind enough, she can gain more insight and information from them. They're like spiritual teachers. Okay. Good. Does she always connect with you when she intends to? She does. She does. She does. So okay. She just needs to relax and and trust. Is she getting better at that? Yes. Okay. She's gone in phases. <laughs> <laughs> now, would you do a body scan, her uh, body scan, and see what's going on with her body? Yes. Mm -hmm. There's something up in her head, mm -hmm. like a, like a fog. Mm -hmm. There. What is that? Is that an energy? It's an energy. Mm -hmm. it's an energy. Would you allow me to address it today? Yes. Very good. So I'm going to bring my hand up in that head and bring it down, 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 and you can express yourself tonight. Are you male or female energy? Male. Male. And what may I call you? Max. Max. Max, how old are you? Fifty. Fifty. And what year is it for you, Max? 1942. Max, what are you doing there with Sarah? Just going along for the ride. Mm-hmm. When did you attach to her, Max? When she was a baby. Okay. Did you know this soul? No. Did she give you permission to attach to her? No. No. So, Max, how did you lose your body? I drank myself. You drank yourself? Yeah. Mm hmm. And okay. how did you die? What were the conditions? I fell down the stairs. Mm hmm. And what happened? I broke my neck. Mm hmm. So, what have you been transmitting to this girl? since she was a baby. I give her headaches. Mm -hmm. What else? Mm -hmm. She feel for Try me. to get her to drink. She doesn't like to drink. You know, between you and Beth, you been, haven't been yeah. very successful, have you? No. Mm -hmm. But I'm stuck here. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you go home, Max? I'm just attached to Earth. I don't. I was afraid of what might be mm -hmm. waiting for me. Why were you so afraid? I was a lousy person. I beat my wife and kids. Mm -hmm. So did people tell you you were going to go to hell? That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. But instead, you found Sarah. Right. Mm -hmm. But you haven't accomplished much, have you? No. And I'm sure you don't feel very good having that head cracked open. No. Mm -hmm. Max, would you allow me to assist you today so you can feel good finally after all these years? Yes. All right. Look inside of you, Max. Look for that spark of light. Tell me when you find it. Yeah. This is the light of the Creator, the one that created you. This is who you really are, Max. 
Make that light as big as your essence. Make it as big as you. And tell me how that feels. How does it feel to have that light as big as you? Feels good. Mm -hmm. Now, Max, make it even bigger. Make it really big, as big as the sun. How does that feel to shine so brightly? It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Now that you feel so wonderful and you know that this is what it feels like to be with the Creator, are you ready to go home now? I am. Mm -hmm. But before you go, Max, are you ready to let go of all of that weight, all of that burden? You have been suffering for a long time. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you have something that you might want to tell your wife? I'm very sorry for behaving the way I did. Mm -hmm. Would you like me to remove some of that from you? Yes. Please. I'll put my hand on your chest, Max, and I want you to go ahead and give me all of that, all of that grief, feelings, all of the repentance of what you've done. Go through your whole body and pull out all of that anger, all of that insecurity, all of that pain that made you beat another person, all of that pain that made you drink yourself to become numb. Pull it all out. You don't need to hold it anymore. Tell me when I have it all, Max. It's gone now. All right, I'm going to send it to the universe. Max, what would you like to put in that space? Acceptance and love. Let's put it in. Fire hose of acceptance and love. Feel it going through your entire essence. And let's seal it in. And now, Max... I'd like for you to go back in time and let's begin healing those relationships and healing your body that died in the crash. Begin flooding it with that white light and love. And tell me what's happening, Max. You know, everything's lightened and illuminated. And, mm -hmm. and allow your head to be totally healed now. How does that feel to have your head healed? Good. Good. What would you like to tell Sarah before you go? I'm so sorry for attaching to you and causing you headaches. Mm -hmm. Trying to get you to drink. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sarah, what would you like to tell him? Max, I forgive you and release you. Mm -hmm. Very good. So before you go, Max, I'd like for you to flood her head with that beautiful white light, that light from Source. And now I'd like for the higher self to tell me, what does it look like inside her head? It's... It's healthy and, and bright. Good. And there's no more. Very fog. good. So, Max, go ahead and go up through the top of her head. Archangel Michael is there, and he's going to escort you right back home, right to the light. And tell me who greets you there. My wife and children are there, mm -hmm. and my parents. And how do they greet you? They're embracing me. Wonderful. Max, may the light of the universe always accompany you. Thank you. Thank you. So let me speak with the higher self and tell me, has that cleared her head? Yes. Mm -hmm. So continue with the rest of the scan and tell me if there's anything else that you find in her body. Throat chakra is congested. Mm -hmm. What's causing that? It's a, like an energetic plug. Mm -hmm. Did she put that energetic plug in there? Or did someone else? Mm -hmm. She put it there. All right. So do we need to have that energetic plug in there? No. All right. But let's find out 
what that energetic plug was for. Let's find out from Sarah, what was that energetic plug for? Where did that it come from? to be cautious, mm -hmm. to protect myself from saying something that would embarrass me or make people think I'm crazy. Mm -hmm. um, do we need to keep that energetic plug in there anymore? No. Mm -hmm. So what would we like to use to remove that plug? You put okay. it in there? I've got a vacuum it. to take it out. All right, so let's vacuum it out. And I'd like for you to allow, once it's vacuumed out, to take a, have Archangel Raphael assist you with this. Tell me what's happening as you remove it. big chunks of dense energy coming out. Mm -hmm. mm. Has that been affecting her tonsils or her throat? Yes. Mm -hmm. So can I ask Archangel Raphael to go ahead and ask that is heal to begin flooding her with your light, your healing light? Much clearer now. Very yeah. good. Would you continue working on that each evening as she sleeps, clearing it more and more, making it more and more powerful, so that when she heals people, she can also heal them with her words? Yes. Thank you. What else have you found in her body? There's still a presence in the chest area. Mm -hmm. All right, let's find out what that presence is. Would you allow me to address it? Yes. Thank you. I'm going to put my hand over it and bring it up. You can express yourself now, are you male or female energy? Neither. Neither. Where do you come from? I don't know, I just am. Mm -hmm. What are you doing to Sarah? with your presence. I'm protecting her. Mm -hmm. What are you protecting her from? From being hurt. Mm -hmm. Now if you're protecting her, did she create you? She did. She did. So you're a thought form. Yes. Now by being in her chest, are you keeping her from doing anything? I prevent her from taking risks. No. Ah. Well, it seems that in order for us to be able to heal others, you need to be able to take some risks. Why are you not willing to allow her to take risks? I'm like a shield, like mm. a breastplate on her chest. All right. So that nothing can come in that would hurt her. Okay. All right. That's fine. So let me ask now, take a deep breath in. Let me ask Sarah. Sarah, do you need this press breastplate on you that's holding you from taking any risks? No. Do you need that anymore? No, I don't. I'd like to get rid of it. All right. So we're not going to get rid of it because something that you created, that you birthed, cannot be eliminated from your body. What we need to do is transform it. So what would you like to transform it into now in order to assist you? Compassion. All right. So let me speak now with that presence of yours. Take a deep breath in. And let me speak now with that thought form, that shield. Yes. Sarah has created you in the past to shield her. And now she would like for you to transform into compassion so that she is able to work with people. Are you ready to transform into something that would benefit her? Yes. Very good.
So I'd like for you now to begin the transformation. I'd like for you to feel that white light, the Christ light, coming in through the crown of her head, filling the space where you are now, and transforming you into compassion. Allow that shield to melt away with that light and feel that heart opening up, allowing it to now be one with others, transmitting your love, transmitting your healing, understanding what people would need and tell me when the transformation is complete. That's complete. Thank you very much. What else have you found? There may be something going on with her eyes, mm -hmm. like, um, fuzziness. Mm -hmm. What's going on there? What's causing that? It's Is an energy form. Mm -hmm. Did she cause it? Yes. All right, so let's find out why she created this form. She doesn't like to see what's going on on mm -hmm. the planet and mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. And this has made her vision hazy and mm -hmm. giving her eye trouble. Mm -hmm. Is that including her eyelashes? Losing her eyelashes? Yes. All right. Does she need that anymore? No. Okay, what would we like to transform that into today? Peace, that's what is. Mm-hmm. All right. So having her feel peace with what's going on? Yes. All right. So let's begin the transformation now of feeling that peace and calm no matter what it is that you're watching or hearing about, knowing that in the moment of now you are always perfectly safe. No matter what you hear, what you see, Everything is fine in the moment of now. That you are always divinely protected. You have a team of archangels always at your beck and call. And that there is no reason for you to close your eyes to things that are happening. Because you are perfectly safe at all times. Tell me when that has been completed. Complete. That's complete now. Thank you very much. What else have you found? Something in the stomach. Mm -hmm. area. What is there in the stomach? What's causing that? Is that an attachment or another mm -hmm. thought? An attachment. All right. May I speak with that attachment? Yes. Thank you. I'm going to bring my hand over to the stomach. Up, 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 up. And you can express yourself now. Good evening. Are you male or female? Female. Female. And what may I call you? Leanne. Leanne. How long have you been there? Mm. Since 
since her first C-section. Mm-hmm. And Leanne, why are you there? I was able to get in easily when she was being operated on. Mm. Leanne, how old are you? 37. Mm-hmm. What year is it for you, Leanne? 1992. Mm-hmm. And how did you lose your body, Leanne? I committed suicide. Mm-hmm. In which way? I slit my wrist. Mm-hmm. So what happened? You wanted to leave this place so much. Why did you stick around? I was afraid I would be punished for killing myself. Ah. Who do you think would punish you? God. Mm. Well, Leanne, you have God within you. Did you know that? No. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to see him if you like. Look for him. Take a look inside and you'll see the light that shines within you. Do you see it? Yes. I'd like for you to go deeper into that light and make it bigger and bigger. Make it so big it takes over your entire essence. How does that feel, Leanne? To feel the love of God within you. It feels like home. Mm -hmm. Does it feel like you'll be punished? No. No, it feels like pure love, doesn't it? Yeah. So is there any reason to be stuck in this woman's body anymore when you can feel total love and peace? No, I'm ready to go. All right, so go ahead and begin detaching yourself. And just out of curiosity, Leanne, what were you doing to her all this time? Causing uh, reproductive organ issues, mm -hmm. um, heavy periods, and fibroids. Mm -hmm. So go ahead, Leanne, and take that white light from God within you and begin shining it in that area where you were residing. Now let's begin healing her from within. How does that feel to have that power to be able to heal? Amazing. I never thought I could do that. Mm -hmm. Very good. And now, Leanne, I want you to go back in time to where you can see yourself slitting your wrists. And I'd like for you to use that same energy to heal yourself then to seal those wrists and put that love, that light into that body. And tell me when you're done. I'm healed. Wonderful. So what would you like to tell Sarah before you leave? Sarah, I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. Very good. Sarah, what would you like to tell her? I forgive you, Leanne. Mm -hmm. So, Leanne, go ahead through the top of her head right here. Archangel Michael is waiting for you. Take his hand and he's going to take you straight up to home, back to the light of the Creator. And tell me when you get there, Leanne. I'm there. How does it feel? Feels right. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody there to greet you? My mother's there. Wonderful. Embrace her, and may the light of the universe always accompany Leanne. Thank you. Let me speak with the higher self again. So she had had questions about her reproductive system. Is that what was causing some of the issues there? Yes. Mm -hmm. So can you begin putting that energy in there so she can feel that energy she's been lacking? Yes. Uh huh. Begin having yeah. her feel that energy, giving it warmth. Begin revving it up so she feels what she's been lacking for so long. Very good. Yes. Anything else that you see in her body? She was asking about allergies, asthma, inflammation. What's causing all of that?
the entities were causing that. Mm-hmm. Are these the ones that came from that other lifetime? Or are there others? I believe that they've all been released. Wonderful. What about her scalp condition? That was from Max. Mm-hmm. What about her poor memory? Him as well. Mm. Good. And what about her heart palpitations? Where's that coming from? It's just, it's the energy. The energy of the planet. Of yes. the planet. It's quickening, and so are our hearts mm-hmm. quickening. What about the blood sugar issue? Where is that coming from? That's a family line mm-hmm. genetic type mm-hmm. issue that goes back. Mm-hmm. Does she need to follow that family line genetic issue? No. Mm-hmm. So can you begin going into her DNA today? And let's reconstruct it so that she doesn't have to carry that load of the family, those health issues. Let's begin rewiring her DNA now. And would you continue working on that while she sleeps? Yes. Thank you. What's the best diet for Sarah? Meat, no meat. That's plant based diet. Mm hmm. She really does love animals. Mm hmm. Um, she would feel better not consuming them. Mm hmm. So, can you begin working with her taste buds so that when she eats animals, she will be reminded that what she's eating is an animal and not meat? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because there's a difference. Meat is something that has no meaning attached to it. It's a way that we have been told that we're eating something for our benefit, when in fact we're eating animals. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. What about her exercise? She exercises a lot. Mm -hmm. It's good for her. Mm -hmm. It releases stress. Yoga is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, Is she being guided right now to the right exercise? Yes. Okay. Anything else that she should improve on? Um, She should lift weights two times a week to build up her muscle. Okay. Good. Now she's getting to an age where she's getting close to menopause. What's the best way for her to go through menopause without those symptoms? Does she need those? She needs to make sure she gets enough rest and Mm -hmm. drinks enough water. Mm -hmm. And also to embrace the change Mm -hmm. as something positive in her life. Yes. It's the next phase. Okay, good. Yeah. Wonderful. So, we've completed all of the questions. Can you do one more scan and see if there's anything that we need to address? And if we find anything, can we send it to the light? She's clear. She's clear. Very good. So I'd like now that she's clear for the Higher Self and Archangel Raphael to begin flooding her with light. I'd like Archangel Raphael to begin using his light from the bottom of her body and the Higher Self through the top. And tell me when you are completely filled her with that healing light sealing her aura, aligning her chakras. Tell me when you are complete. It's complete. Thank you very much. Is there anything that I could have asked that I haven't that you would like to tell her today? She 
continues to travel, travel around the world. Mm -hmm. Passion. Anything else? Are we coming? Our team really adores her and supports mm -hmm. her a hundred percent. Wonderful. Welcome back. Hello. <laughs> what do you think about that? How do you feel? Wow. Good? Yeah, I feel good. Yeah, I feel much I'm gonna, lighter. I'm going to switch those with these. Let's okay. get you some yeah, grounding. I'm, I'm burning up. <laughs> uh huh. You did wonderful. What do you remember? I, I remember quite a bit all of it actually mm -hmm. um the entities that was really strange you feel actually. you got some relief from them yeah yeah mm -hmm. um what about from uh, your past lives they make there's a lot sense? of clarity there now yeah, yeah? Um, you feel you're ready to start healing yes yeah i think i can get on my path and go forward now yeah, without the fear or the you had you had created some thought forms there to hold you back. I did it. You did it. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see that whatever you create, you can transform. Okay. And you had actually blocked your throat from not saying anything, not being really ridiculed. Mm -hmm. You blocked your heart from not being hurt. Mm -hmm. And now you know you've got your path ahead of you. Yes. Nice. Ready to start a new day. <laughs> yeah. So do you want to keep this personal? Um, I'm not sure. It depends. It, it, uh, can I re look at it first? Absolutely. Then, okay. Yeah. I mean, there's a, there's stuff there that that you know we can knock out, but it's up to you how you feel about it. Okay. You know, if if you feel that it's something it could help others, we can do that. If you okay. want to just put about the past lives, we could just put about that. Okay. You know? I'm happy to help others. Yeah. The session. Yeah. I mean, as far as... Uh, it wasn't too deeply personal, I don't think. No, just a few things. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good. All right, so whenever you're ready, you can get up. Uh, you don't have to get up right away because you may still feel a little... I feel different. like, uh, yeah, a lot of energy, a lot of heat in my body. Yeah, yeah, that's what happens. Sometimes you... It's so cold before. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, that's what happens. That's why I cool it off. So, if you have to go to the bathroom, go ahead. How long was that? It felt like maybe. Um, hour. what do you? What does it feel like? <laughs> Two hours and nineteen minutes. Oh my goodness! Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So when you come back, we'll say goodbye, okay? Okay. So we can interview you, and you can tell people what you felt like. Feel good?
Ready? Yeah. Right, have a seat there, and I'll sit on the on the on this side over here. I have to get you focused so I know where you are. It's an empty little device. <laughs> it's just like it's a small. monopod. It's it's a tripod. Mm -hmm. Tripod it can't get close to the bed. All right, so I'm gonna put you here. I'm gonna put my mics on, and then we're gonna talk. There we go. Oops. Oh, my head gets so much lighter. <laughs> All right. Well, here we go. Let me let me put this underneath me because I need to be taller. I feel tall now. Wow. So it was a wonderful experience. It was. So tell everybody how it felt. I felt like I was awake. Yeah. <laughs> now, yeah. I, I thought may, maybe hypnosis would be just a very deep trance, almost a sleep-like state, uh -huh. but no, I was very present, yeah. but the information was coming through. Um, uh -huh. Those entities were definitely speaking, were and I could hear them, and I could see them. Wow, what did they look like? Max was a big guy, big, really early guy, and um, had a lot of pain and anger in him, which I could sense. Mm -hmm. He's not a happy mm -hmm. person. Wow. Didn't have a happy life at all. And what about Borgia? Borgia is such a, a wonderful, wise woman mm -hmm. who helped so many people and was caught in the end. Yeah. So we, we had, I had asked her, um, well, she had asked me how long this was. How, how long did it feel to you? It felt like an hour. Yeah, and it was over two hours. Which, that just blows my mind. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see that, you know, sometimes you feel that you're not hypnotized, but you do miss all this time. Yeah. So there's stuff there that you don't remember, mm -hmm. probably. Yeah, I'm looking know? forward to reviewing yeah, the video. Yeah, it's good. So what would you like to tell everybody about hypnosis? How they, how do you prepare for it, and, and what would you suggest? Um, I prepared by meditating every day mm -hmm. and trying to eat as clean as possible, not drinking, mm -hmm. as you said, no alcohol. Um, yeah. And I meditated before and did a little yoga mm -hmm. to help relax. Yeah. And um, it don't come with any expectations, so you're open. No to, expectations. <laughs> so you're open to appreciating everything. Yeah. That's yeah. Gifted through the higher self to you, all the knowledge yes. and the insight into the past lives. How did it feel to express your higher self? It felt very natural. It really did feel like it was part of me. Mm -hmm. And the higher self is you. It's just a divine part of you. It's the that inner voice. It's that intuition. So when you are expressing your higher self, it's just coming out. It's there's like it's not like you're possessed or anything. It's you. No, it's, it's so really very you. natural. It's very natural. Mm -hmm. So we are right now in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And how far do you travel? From Connecticut, <laughs> three hour train ride. Yeah. So um, if you want a session with me, you can go to my website, albawyman.com. You can sign up for my newsletter also, which will tell you where I'm going to next. I travel all around the world. So go to my out of town page sign up and it comes out about once a month and you will see if a city is near you go ahead and click on it and i hope i get to see you pretty soon so until the next time thank you for watching this and i hope you continue <laughs> learning like i do thank you so much bye <laughs>